Good morning. Um, we are nearing the end of Holy Week. Uh, so um, what I want to do today is um, just talk about the crucifixion. Just um, read the story, not, uh, not add too much, but... Um, so as, as most of you know, today's Good Friday. Um, today would be the day in Holy Week that we traditionally celebrate or, or remember, actually, I guess more so the crucifixion of Christ. So um, it's, it's a bit of a somber day. Uh, and yet um, we know that Sunday's coming. And uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and um, read through the story. I'm going to be reading in Mark um, chapter 15. And um, just to, to catch us up a little bit. So um, Thursday evening, uh, there was the Last Supper. Um, Jesus washes the disciples' feet. And then um, Thursday night finishes up with Jesus in Gethsemane. And <clears throat> praying that, um, if possible, that um, that he would not have to, to drink of the cup of crucifixion. And yet, um, submitting that if it is the Father's will, um, that he, uh, he obviously will will submit to that. Um, so he's, he's very troubled in his spirit, um, which, which shows the humanity, uh, of Jesus. Uh, he willingly went to the cross. He, um, he tells Pilate, uh, basically there's really no power over him on earth that he's going willingly, that he, they can only do to him what he will allow to be done. Um, so he's going willingly, but still feels a despair. Um, I, I would even maybe say anxiety of, of what he's about to go through. Um, so, so we commemorate that today. Um, and, and again, I'm going to go ahead and read the story. So throughout the night, um, while we were sleeping, um, Jesus would have been in that day going through the various trials. So, um, in front of the, in front of the Sanhedrin, um, in front of Pilate, in front of Herod, uh, and, in um, just having these various inquisitions, um, <clears throat> and you can certainly go back and, and read about those, um. And then, of course, he's beaten, um, he's mocked, he's, he's put a crown of thorns and a robe on to just mock his claim of kingship. Um, he's flogged. Isaiah says, basically, he pretty much doesn't even look like a human being anymore. He's so beaten and bruised and, and scarred. Um, so... That brings us to where we are at. Um, yeah, so I'm going to begin in Mark. Um, in verse 20. It says, after they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple robe and put his clothes on him. They led him out to crucify him. And when it says they led him out, so the place where he was crucified is actually outside the, the city proper of Jerusalem. Um, so there was, there was a bit of a, a journey uh, to the cross. Uh, verse 21, they forced a man coming in from the country who was passing by to carry Jesus' cross. He was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull. They tried to give him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his clothes, casting lots for them to decide what each would get. Uh, 
And this is a, um, this was actually prophesied in Psalm 22. Um, Psalm 22, 18 says, They divided my garments among themselves, and they cast lots for my clothing. So we see hundreds of years before, uh, again, to, to speak to the... Um, um, the dependency of the Bible, the the, the, the consistency of it, uh, things that were prophesied hundreds of years before, uh, come true here in the in the crucifixion scene. Uh, verse twenty five. Now it was nine in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge written against him was the King of the Jews. They crucified two criminals with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by were yelling insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, Ha! The one who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself by coming down from the cross. So remember earlier in the Gospels, uh, Jesus had said that he would tear down the temple uh, and... Um, and rebuild it in three days. And they questioned, you know, the temple took years to build. How will you rebuild it? And of course, he was talking about his body as a temple. Uh, and that it would be destroyed. And in three days that he would rise again. Verse 31. In the same way, the chief priests and the scribes were mocking him among themselves, saying, He saved others, but he could not save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross so that we may see and believe. Even those who were crucified with him taunted him. And of course, the, the crazy irony is that he absolutely could have done what they called him to do. And just imagine, this is not in scripture, so this is my imagination, but... You know, I just imagine Jesus in, uh, in his humanity being tempted to come down from the cross to do just that because he absolutely could have. But he knew that he had to die for his brothers and sisters, for his fellow heirs, for us. Verse 33, when it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is translated, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Other translations say forsaken. This also is in Psalm 22. Um, Actually, the first verse it says, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Why are you so far from my deliverance and from my words of groaning? And of course, God had not completely abandoned him. But Jesus is um, feeling the weight of God's wrath, of our sin. And a part of that wrath is distance from God. Uh, that's a great part of what hell is. It's simply the absence of, of God in that place. Verse 35, when some of those standing there heard this, they said, see, he's calling for Elijah. Elijah. Some ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, fixed it on a sick stick, offered him a drink and said, let's see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus let out a loud cry and breathed his last. Then the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who was standing opposite him saw the way he breathed his last, he said, truly, this man was a son of God. There were also women watching from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, the younger, and of 
Joses, Moses, and Salome. In Galilee, these women followed him and took care of him. Many other women had come up with him to Jerusalem. Verse 42, when it was already evening, because it was a day of preparation, that is the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent member of the Sanhedrin, who was himself looking forward to the kingdom of God, came and boldly went to Pilate and asked Jesus for the body. Pilate was surprised that he was already dead. Crucifixion was a long, long, painful death. Um, it, it, it wasn't the nails that killed. It was uh, basically asphyxiation. It was not being able to breathe under the weight of your body hanging from the cross. Summoning the, the centurion, he asked him whether he had already died. This is Pilate. When he found out from the centurion, he gave the corpse to Joseph. After he bought some linen cloth, Joseph took him down and wrapped him in linen. Then he laid him in a tomb, cut out of the rock, and rolled a stone against the entrance to the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, were watching where he was laid. And in the book of Mark, that brings us to um, to the resurrection, which we'll um, obviously celebrate Sunday morning. Um, so I, I don't have a, a ton of commentary to add. Um, I think the, the moment in the text really speaks for itself. I, I would say just take time today um, to pray, to thank him for his sacrifice. Um, remember what he did for us, what it meant, that it was absolutely necessary that he was crushed for our transgressions. And it's by his wounds that we are healed. That he who knew no sin came sin on our behalf. Um, some different traditions that I'm aware of on how to celebrate um, the text mentioned from noon to three, uh, Jesus hung on the cross. Um, and I know when, when I was younger, um, we would fast from noon to three, just not eat or drink, um, just in remembrance, uh, allowing that um, the, the hunger and thirst that you might feel just to, in some very, very small way, uh, commemorate the suffering of Jesus during that time. If For Mosaic, uh, for those of you there, we'll, the sanctuary will be open from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, for you to come in to pray. Uh, there will be some... Um, some guided meditations um, and opportunities for you to do that, but uh, just a quiet place. If you do come, just encourage you to come in a, a, an appropriate uh, stance, uh, quietly um, contemplating, um, perhaps even mourning. Uh, so that's really all today. It's short, I know. Um, but again, I think, um, what Jesus did on the cross speaks more words than I could ever. Um, so hope to see you on Sunday. We will have three services, 7 30, 9 AM and, um, 10 50. Uh, so hope to see you then. We will, uh, celebrate the resurrection. Hope you all have a good weekend.